Mornings in Janine is a sweeping historical narrative spanning from 1941 to 2003, delving into the Israeli invasion and occupation of Palestine. Penned by Susan Abulhawa, herself a descendant of Palestinian refugees with a global upbringing, the novel intricately weaves together the perspectives of various members of a Palestinian family. Through their lens, readers witness the loss of land, home, and loved ones, capturing the collective struggle and resilience of the Palestinian people amidst adversity. Central to the narrative is the profound significance of family bonds, resiliently weathering decades of hardship. Interwoven with themes of intercultural conflict, love, and loss, the story unfolds against the backdrop of historical events, including the horrors of World War II and the subsequent partition of Palestine by the United Nations. Beginning in the tranquil Palestinian village of Ein Had, where generations of the family have thrived, the narrative swiftly shifts as the specter of Nazi atrocities and the rise of Zionism loom large. The UN's decision to partition Palestine in 1947 ignites a chain of events, leading to the displacement of Palestinians, including the protagonist family, to the confines of refugee camps, notably Janine. Over the ensuing six decades, readers follow the trials and tribulations of Yehia's descendants, navigating the relentless conflict with Israeli authorities and settlers. Tragic losses punctuate their journey, from the death of Yehia's wife, Basima, to the heart-wrenching abduction of Hassan's son, Ismail, by a desperate Israeli soldier grappling with infertility. Originally published in the United States as The Scar of David in 2006, the novel has garnered widespread acclaim selling over a million copies and transcending linguistic barriers with translations into more than 20 languages. Through its poignant narrative, Mornings in Janine offers a profound exploration of the enduring spirit of the Palestinian people amidst the tumult of history. The profound loss of their son irreversibly alters the trajectory of Dahlia, once a spirited and free-spirited woman. Her remaining children, Yusef and Amal, grow up under the weight of their brother's absence. Hassan, their father, endeavors to nurture Amal's spirit by reciting poetry to her in the mornings, instilling in her a passion for learning and verse. Life in the refugee camp continues its steady rhythm until the eruption of the six-day Israeli-Palestinian conflict in 1967, which brings fresh tragedy with Hassan's disappearance. Yusuf's simmering desire for retribution intensifies as he endures brutality at the hands of soldiers, witnesses the death of a friend, and watches helplessly as Amal is wounded by gunfire while fleeing from a soldier. Yusef, later renamed David, encounters Ismail amidst the tumult of conflict, yet their shared recognition remains unspoken. Joining the Palestinian Liberation Organization, PLO, Yusef embarks on a path of resistance, leaving behind a shattered Amal and his beloved Fatima. Dahlia's passing leaves Amal adrift, prompting her to seek solace in education, eventually leading her to a scholarship in the United States. Returning to Lebanon in 1981, Amal finds herself entwined in love with Majid amidst escalating tensions. Tragedy strikes again when Majid falls victim to Israel's invasion of Lebanon. In 1982, the massacre in the Sabra and Shatila refugee camps claims the lives of Fatima and her infant daughter, Palestine. Yusuf's commitment to the cause drives him back into the fray, leaving Amal to navigate a tortured existence. Accused of a terrorist attack on the U.S. Embassy in Lebanon, Yusuf's name becomes synonymous with violence, prompting Amal's scrutiny by the American Secret Service. Reunited with Ismail, now David, in the United States, Amal finds solace in their shared history, loneliness, and David's remorse for his actions against his own people. A visit to Janine with her daughter Sarah ends in tragedy as Amal falls victim to an Israeli soldier's bullet, leaving Sarah to carry on her mother's legacy through activism for Palestinian liberation. In a final revelation, Yusef confesses to not carrying out the 1983 attack, opting instead to assume responsibility to shield others. Now living as a destitute wanderer in the Middle East, Yusef remains steadfast in his refusal to let hatred corrode the love he holds within. I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe thank you.